Today on Gamers Couch. Terra. Terra The Tula. party game where being close counts. I win. I'm close to you. <laughs> no. Welcome to the couch. This is Daniel. I'm Sarah. We're talking board games and today we share Terra with you. I would like to call it Terra because of things that have been cut out of this footage that might end up in a blooper reel at the end of the year maybe. I don't know. But today we will talk about this game as we do every week. Rules and gameplay. We show you a few turns. We play a bit. Uh, so that you get an idea what this game is all about. Then we talk about what we liked or not liked, have a thumb rating and share funny stories and experiences. There will not be a teaser for Draw for Initiative today because we published this week. And yes, you were right, folks. The game was Kanagawa that we published. And now, my love, since housekeeping is done, you can do your thing now and uh, explain rules and gameplay. You are allowed to talk and show and tell. Now. You have one cube. Two cube. No, I'm... Oh. <laughs> this is, this is going to be such a migraine. <laughs> Terra is... Um, well, it's itself calls... Uh, it, um, it does call itself. Really difficult to talk with mouthful of tongue. <laughs> Tongue full of mouth? No. Um, it's, uh, it calls itself a party game, um, but it is effectively almost like a Trivial Pursuit-like quiz game where you are tasked to correctly give answers. The good news is you don't really have to be super correct, although that does help to win the game. Um, everybody has uh, five little cubes that uh, can be used to make some kind of beds or, or indicators where what you think is going on. And uh, each round uh, is uh, started by taking a look at a card. And I'm holding that in this camera or should I hold it in this camera? You decide now because let's, you might let's, make me angry. With let's editing. make it. Let's make it this camera first. So this is this is one of the cards. Uh, actually, let me uh, show you the entire card. But uh, as you've seen, this is how you first see the card. So it shows you what this is about. In this uh, in this case, this is about the fastest land mammal, and uh, then below Sorry. that. Below that, or me, when I'm trying to run away from a uh, grumpy Sarah, um, below that, there's uh, not three, that fast. <laughs> three hints okay. at uh, what we have to guess. So in this case, it says, um, oh. and I'm sorry for holding card away from you, this has 12 areas, the maximum distance at its highest speed, and the maximum speed in kilometers per hour. So, uh, eh. That's there. Now, uh, there's four different types of kind of uh, questions that you can answer. Um, areas is one, and areas will be answered in, now we guess, I guess mm -hmm. we switch to the other camera. Areas Hello. is done by putting one of your cubes on one of the areas on, on the game. Because if you think, hey, this is probably here where the fastest animal is. It's there. You're wrong. Um, <laughs> That's where you would put them. Then uh, maximum distance at its highest speed uh, is uh, this blue track, which is uh, the distance track. Uh, you see centimeters, meters, and kilometers. And yes, I'm sorry for you, but we are playing the metric version. Because we're because, cool like because that. Because this is the superior system. <laughs> 500 people unsubscribed. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Out of 300. <laughs> correct. <laughs> we little, little <laughs> housekeeping interruption. I'm migraining pretty hard today, so um, he has to, to be the cheer one. me up and make me laugh nonetheless, because laughter is the best medicine. And uh, he's probably assuming you have migraines too. Drink, so. drink your tea. I will, my love. Um. I will. Uh, the other thing we have to guess here is the maximum speed, uh, which is red. Red is just the regular 
number track. So uh, this is just numbers and usually the card um, will give you a unit, in this case kilometers per hour, what you want to do. Uh, and here uh, both or all of these tracks follow the same rule. You have a cube and you place it on one of the spaces uh, between the numbers and that's where your guess goes. Um, the green track, by the way, is a year track uh, which uh, goes from uh, before Christ and uh, Anno Domini uh, up to now. Um, which um, is obviously not used uh, in, in this card, but there are other cards that use different combinations of these things. Usually it's always an area and two of these uh, bars uh, down here for, for that. Now, um, also, this card gives us a hint uh, by... Uh, you can take the big camera, it's okay. fine. I don't want to cut back and forth. Okay, I'm sorry. The, the hint is that on our world map, it is in this lower right quadrant. So anywhere in here. Antarctica, I'm very sure. Around uh, starts with uh, the, the player left to the one who is the most knowledgeable. So I'm starting in this one, I guess. Oh. Oh, thanks for the compliment. By by placing one cube. Um, let's say I'll stick with Central Africa and I place my first cube there. Next turn, it's my player to the left. In this case, it's Sarah. She gets to place a cube. And Sarah, again, can uh, decide if she wants to have a better guess at this. Also, there's 12 areas where this animal can be found in. So it's very likely to have a lot of hits over there. Uh, or she could have gone for the the maximum distance or the maximum speed in kilometers per hour, and would be unfair for me to place anything. No, we're we we play a card or two later, a yes. real card. But um, so let's let's say yeah, I think um, this is um, mm -hmm. over there. I pass. You pass, yes. and uh, just uh, for you to, I to give you an idea, I, I pick the South Atlantic, and why that is the case, uh, I'm going to explain in a, in a hot minute, uh, talking about that. And uh, then the other two I will use to highlight how this works, and for that I actually have to cheat, because I don't know how this works. Uh, so let's say, I think uh, 500, to, uh, uh, 500 meters to 2 kilometers is the maximum distance that this mammal can do. So let's uh, say we have that. We would now take the card out of the box after everybody has passed or does not have any cubes anymore. What we are doing now is check who's right. Um, and on, on this, you can see here is a little map that highlights the areas. They are also alphabetically listed here. So uh, in this case, I'm asking is uh, Central uh, Africa in here? And it should be. Yep, it is. It's on here, but it mm -hmm. actually is not listed on here. That's what... Because it's Congo Basin, they, I think they have renamed it on the map for Central Africa. We had that on another card as well. True. Okay. So... Well, first... Somebody at the table knows where Congo is. First little... Give you a hint. She has boobs. First little stumble. No, well, it's it's not too bad. I mean, the, the as long as the, the card picture down here is, is correct, that's it's usually good enough to yep. uh, quickly identify if you're right or not. Yep. So, in this case, uh, my two red are right. Uh, Sarah's yellow here is right. Um, and actually, this one is right sort of as well. Because for each... Absolutely correct answer. So these three, you will get seven points. For each one that is adjacent, and the board reminds of us um, at that, uh, you get three points. So I would get seven, 14, and here three makes 17 points in total. And I would move my cube over to the 17, and Sarah would get seven. And now for each uh, cube that uh, yielded points, so all three of these, I get them back. Sarah gets hers back. If uh, there would have been a cube on the board that's wrong, that goes next to the board and not into your personal supply. Um, after that, we check on, on, the, on the scales here, and here it's the same. Uh, so the maximum distance that uh, this animal is uh, traveling is uh, 500 meters. And, uh, How would you have known that? Yes, you are that's so super smart. surprising. So 500 meters is exactly that line. That means that both this space and this space uh, are considered the correct answer because they are literally on that. If it would be 505 meters, then only this cube would be right because that's between 500 and 1,000. Um, 
And uh, this cube here is considered adjacent because if that's the correct one, that's, this is the adjacent one. So again, these two would be the correct ones. I can highlight them with the two cubes. Uh, and these two next to them would be the adjacent ones, again, yielding seven and three points respectively. Uh, if you wanted to know how fast that uh, land mammal is, it is 110 kilometers per hour. And we could have uh, done that on here. So again, here, these two would be the correct answer and uh, the other two would be adjacent. Uh, after you've done that, uh, you put the card aside, you get one of the cubes back from those that would, had been placed beside the boards. Uh, if after that you still have less than three cubes, you draw up to three cubes again, and the next round starts. Uh, rinse and repeat for six turns and um, see who has won the game with having the most points. Let's move the cu cubes back and give them a bit, little bit of a laughter and play a card or two before we go into the next. So I'm... Um, just doing this so nobody yeah. can cheat. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, the next thing here, and maybe you can guess with us, the NASCAR lines, oh. which is not not uh, okay. the, the NASCAR lines, uh, which would be cars. Uh, it is apparently in the um, southwestern sector or quadrant of, of this thing. It is just one area. It is, uh, uh, and it's asking us in which year they were created on the green track and the largest figure length on the blue, blue track. track. And Sarah starts this yes, time. Yes, I do, and I'm going for the Andes. Now, here's a, here's a good example of why this game is great. I have no idea what those NASCAR lines even are, but... I know that Sarah seemed confident. So, assuming that you she will was, get to listen to some audiobooks of mine, assuming, history ones. Assuming that she's right, uh, uh, I cannot pick the Andes uh, anymore, and I forgot to tell you that uh, you can only place one cube per area, regardless of uh, if it's on the map or on here. But I can write on her knowledge a little bit and hopefully get some. Well, adjacent points by going for the Amazon Basin. And maybe the South Pacific. And maybe Patagonia. What were the other ones? The biggest uh, figure? The create the year they were created and the largest length uh, of a figure or largest figure length. It's obviously two hundred thousand kilometers. They, this uh, this I end should, should. spans. I'm across. trying to remember. <laughs> it was really bad. Also, one of the games where you can introduce a little uh, uh, sand clock uh, if you wanted to. Um, now I'm still going with uh, I pass. regions that are adjacent. So uh, if Sarah passes, she cannot get back in, but um, she gets to keep a cube. So if you're not entirely certain about that, that's a great way to do that. I'm now going all in and go with Central America, which is still adjacent to the Andes. I don't have any cubes anymore. And Let's reveal. Re with that, re we reveal. And see reveal. if I remembered. And it is the Andes uh, as an area, um, as we can see here in text and there on the map. Meaning Sarah gets seven plus six, uh, so seven, three, three, uh, 13 points. Whoop, whoop. Going there. She gets her cubes back. Thank you. We're still working on And right. I get working. one, two, <laughs> three, four, five times three, 15 points. For being adjacent and that totally paid off even though i had no idea what this uh, was even about um, mm. and now i can read this and be a, a much uh, a smarter man or at least a more knowledgeable man Why is knowing something cube still there? because i missed it mm. uh, uh, and now one. i and now i know down here that the nazca lines are a series of ancient geoliths located in the nasa desert in southern peru mm -hmm. Or Nesca Desert. Uh, 
They have really funny, funny animals, lions and monkeys and spiders and snakes. They really look cool. And uh, they are the largest one is has a length of 200 meters. I was and off. Sarah was uh, speculating uh, somewhere between two and five kilometers. That concludes this uh, rounds and uh, round. And what we would do now is, is we get back cube one bag. cube from the sideboard. Uh, I still have all my cubes, so that doesn't apply to me. But if Sarah would have had, let's say, two wrong, one would still remain there, only giving her four cubes during the next round. Next one I have to finish before I have to be before you. <laughs> the next start. thing is Svalbard. Svalbard is in the northern eastern quadrant. It is one area we want to know in which year it was discovered and uh, we want to know how many islands are in here. I would just say... Can I look at the picture? Because the picture sometimes gives clues. I think this looks like a Scandinavian kind of thing. Yeah. I have, again, no idea. Uh, it, you're, you're really good. You might that. now say, well, you stupid Europeans, you must know everything in Europe because we know everything in America if we're from America. But no, we don't. We barely know our front street, um, at least in my case. Um, I think Svalbard sounds a little bit like uh, Northern Europe. Like it, it sounds very Norwegian, but I don't remember <laughs> if it was Norwegian or not. Um, then so I'm just going... The year it was discovered. Um, let's see. A uh, number of islands. Um, just a quick glance at uh, what can be seen there. I'd say it's somewhere between 10 and 20 without knowing anything. I'm going it. for the Russian border going to Finland a bit. I'll take the North Sea, Baltic Sea. I don't like you anymore. I take the Arctic Ocean. And I'll take the North Atlantic. So how many islands and what was the other uh, thing? The discovery, the year when it was discovered. Now I have to think. Hold on. And discovered where? If it was discovered by YouTube, we could say maybe after 2000. <laughs> really? Are you sure it wasn't the 1800s? Uh, let me see. So, um, 18 something something was South Pole. North Pole was earlier. They were probably going there on the way. So, I'm saying something. Something early 1800s. Let's go here. Uh, uh, yeah, 1800s. I would say Svalbard sounds to me like something that involves Vikings. And we all know that during the Viking Age, uh, laser raptors were a thing. So <laughs> it must be way earlier. Of What? I've seen a Viking, know, I've seen a Viking ride a dinosaur, yeah, a T-Rex with a minigun. So, me too. Um, I'd just say there's uh, probably a long time people have been living there, so I'd say it's somewhere before Christ. Um, and I'm saying a few less islands. Okay, let's see who's, uh, who's, who's less educated. Who's better at guessing? It is surprisingly the Arctic Ocean. I sit there, my love. Mm. Oh, it, now, it heals my migraine. <laughs> Can we play some more? <laughs> now, uh, again, Sarah, Arctic Ocean gets seven points for this and three points each for these two. So that's another 13, Thank bringing you. her up to 26. Thank uh, you. For me, uh, Scandinavia is fortunately uh, next to the Arctic Ocean, so is the North Atlantic. Um, but I think, no, the North Sea is not adjacent anymore to the Arctic Ocean, which means this guy gets a timeout and goes next to the board. And I get, get six, six points, points for this, bringing me up to 21. Now, let's see. It was so discovered in the year 1596, mm. which we'll both puts wrong. both of us um, at the wrong side. And it's over a 400, which... Uh, yeah, not islands. even close. It's uh, still belonging to Norway, so I wasn't too far off. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah. 
Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you swallow that. <laughs> uh, now, um, I'm in the lead. We can stop playing. <laughs> now we now we have a couple more cubes in in uh, in the timeout zone, so to speak. Uh, but we still get one back. Uh, I get. I'm up to three with this, so that's, uh, that's all I get. These the next turn, and uh, maybe if I place these correctly, I get more. One more next turn. But that's Terra. It is uh, uh, a terrifying, simple game, which uh, is good because it intends to be a party game, uh, meaning that it should be simple to play, uh, very simple to explain. And uh, with that given, I think everybody can very easily drop in and start uh, playing this and have fun or second guess other people. Um, which uh, makes it uh, quite uh, good for, I would say, parties. Can you say age number thing yes. and then we can go into the next section? So this particular game is for two to six players, it takes about 45 minutes, and it is age 10 and up. Uh, you may notice that we have uh, the uh, English uh, uh, version, although this game was uh, designed by Friedemann Friese, who is apparently green-haired and German. Um, but it does, it says Terra, not Farah. He always has an F in his games, no? Game names? Does it have a different German name? I don't know. And I, I don't think so. But it's it's Terra written in green letters. So yeah, so that's consistent. Good, good enough. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, although you, know, you you might be surprised to hear that it's for two to six people. At least that's what I was surprised about because with these party games, I kind of immediately associate a game Big that is up to yeah. let's say at least eight players or something. And actually. It's I would say you can easily play this with teams uh, or mm -hmm, more players. Exactly. But we call this likes and dislikes now, just to officially oh. have that. And now keep talking. Okay. Please, my love. Um, and, uh, well, I'm uh, armchair designer talking here, so I don't don't take anything I say, but I think <laughs> you could probably house rule this with more players if you come up with some substitute for their cubes and yeah. maybe um, lift the restriction that you can uh, only place one cube per area. Maybe. You know, it's, it's kind of like you could play it like Taboo. You don't always yeah. choose the good people <laughs> in your team, so you could divide the cubes and uh, one person in the team has to put one and the other one has to put one and if yeah. if one of them knows the answer and the other one does not know anything about the subject and totally screws them up well you got some hilarious things yeah. probably yeah. happening yeah. with the table so you could extend although, the groups maybe although with bigger groups you might want to introduce really something like a um like a sand clock or some yeah. some, some timekeeping device uh, yeah. maybe something that you can hold to your ear and say hello um <laughs> Hmm. Hello. <laughs> um, to, to, to. to speed that up. Uh, the thing I, I forgot to mention is after each round, uh, the start player goes to the left, so nobody gets uh, an, an yeah, infinite amount uh, of advantages. Yeah. Although that is obviously also tied to the player count. You're playing six rounds with six players so that everybody gets a start. Um, uh, clearly, it is not always useful to be the first, and sometimes it is really it, useful yeah. to be the first. It depends uh, on um, if you know if you got a small bot card or yeah. if you got um, a NASCAR lines lines card. card. Yeah, it depends. I mean, I would have been way better with the first UFO sightings, I guess, which would have been the next card. In modern time, or do we go ancient time? With that. That's well, the well, it says first sighting per year. Uh, well, the year, and uh, I think. Okay, that means. Uh, well, there is means in in the old. Amazon, Amazon delivery. Is it Lego, or is it Amazon? Ach ja, jump cuts. Mm, no, no. So that was the delivery man and he just brought some Lego. So you know what we're going to do the next couple of 
leisure time, maybe date night. Hmm? Um, but yeah, watch the Instagram of mine if you want to know what we're building. It's, I but, mean, it's it's good that we didn't uh, say what we're doing for the last game night uh, or our date night because we were uh, kind of planning uh, playing a different game instead of this one. Yes. Yes, maybe, but, but maybe we get that done next time. Yeah, hope so. But we were we were at the uh, UFO, uh, and I I didn't look, but I wanted to. Well, there's in old um, Hindu texts and stuff at the with the pictures. There's UFOs in the painted in the bag. So I, I think this refers to modern time or ancient time. This refers to the first time someone actually called it in nineteen forty seven unidentifiable flying object. Uh, 1947. There we go. What would you have said? <laughs> I would have said, screw you. <laughs> I am and no changing more. the rules of this game. Hey, I'm super close. <laughs> Oh, it's only 70,000 70, sightings per year. Wow, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of UFOs. Um, yeah. Um, well, I mean, some birds, I would call them UFOs because I don't know what kind of birds and, they and are. All, and, and all of them, or most of them, in, in the in the U.S. West Coast, well... Oh, well, anyway... Um, seems to be working out. This uh, uh, We were at the likes and dislikes, so uh, we were saying you could house rule with uh, more players. teams I, and stuff. Yeah. I definitely am with you. However, I would also say this is a very nice family game yeah. that could uh, very well replace um, Trivial Pursuit and for me personally it does. I do like quiz games and um, stuff because well I'm a very curious person and I well watch pretty much every documentary and show and everything that is about education on the planet if I have access to it and uh, I have a huge watch list still but uh, I kind of seem to be like a sponge to soak things up like that and on these occasions I can then Shine. well now just do the remember thing and uh, or be really pissed at myself because I don't remember but I know that I read it in a book you remember last night maybe and I can I can still really enjoy that knowing nothing about the world but being <laughs> clever enough to read other humans and yeah, their you, knowledge really, potential you're and really just, uh, you're really good at that you're go really for the good adjacent and sometimes at reading people sometimes yeah. they're wrong and I just skip the right yeah thing you get the adjacent the anyway exactly but um i like that a lot and this is you know even if i'm wrong even if i lose really badly which totally happened um i really enjoy it because i like just well doing the knowledge recounting thing and then thinking about things that came up on the cards and uh going down um the, the the knowledge lane path in my brain just like oh yeah that that connects to this and this connects to that and that is because of that and the year we did discover that and that was blah 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 all that kind of jazz and sometimes it's just when you read a new card and everybody at the table sighs and goes like oh my god i have no fucking idea what are you talking about so i like that a lot and it does um venture way better for me than travel pursuit because there is no dice and the the uh, categories are very, very narrow here. So with Trivial Pursuit, you have things like sports or comic pop culture, where I'm not really, really good at. But I, I kind of am okay with the... Um, um, with the... Please keep, keep thinking yeah, what you I, I wanted to say. I, well, geography, I, that's the well, word. I just hold some, some no, 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 that's there. fine, that's fine. I was the, missing the word. Geography, that's the word. Or history and stuff like that. I'm kind of good with that. But in Trivial Pursuit, you need to have one of those stones for every category. And this is where I suck all the time. Uh, here, 
I'm just not having the categories that I suck at. So this is way more enjoyable for there's, me. Also, no dice. Like there's said. there's a, a couple more things. I think that this is a, a, a huge improvement over a game like Trivial Pursuit. First of all, uh, everybody gets to play on the question. Uh, even though you mm. might be not, uh, not the first, uh, but everybody gets to guess. Uh, second of all, I think... The questions are, there's a good distribution between very obscure stuff and uh, things that uh, quite a few should know. There's even some things that I would consider trick questions, where mm -hmm. it asks you how many, and the answer is zero or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which uh, Trivial Pursuit also does, uh, specifically when it's, go Comes to when, it's, when it's about how often penguins mate um, per year. And that's uh, either either never or once. And once is kind of kind of bad, right? So you once say twice. Never, never is really hard for them to to stay alive. Once mm -hmm. is really depressing. So mm -hmm. if you, then you say twice, just out of kind of a kind heart, feeling bad for the penguins, and then it turns out it's only once. Uh, well, and then you take your antidepressants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but, but uh, uh, first of all, that, then second, I, I totally agree about the uh, the, the no die rolling uh, because that is really the I think the most frustrating part about Trevor Pursuit. But yeah. other quiz games also fall into that that trap that, that you're really them. stuck on either one area of of uh, expertise or. Um, on, on getting really some unlucky questions and here the questions are either unlucky for everybody or at least at least at you least always have body, the yeah. idea of um you're, you're making some progress which i think is, mm -hmm. is good mm -hmm. and um, you learn something without being punished that much so also and that is that is the conceit i give this to be actually almost a, a more a little bit of a party game than a family game is that it plays really quickly um mm -hmm. that uh, i mean uh, there's also family games that play quickly but um i think it's perfectly possible to go through this 45 minutes with a full complement of six maybe even more oh, yes. more people unless you let them uh, debate uh, too long yeah or... you could you could say you got uh, 30 seconds for to put down a cube yes that's a reasonable time. You can think while the others put down yeah. the cube. And so, and since this is, it has very few components. Uh, you just get your wooden cubes uh, and uh, the cards ready, and then you're ready. I uh, did. Oh, by the way, I I, I didn't tell you because you were still making yourself human this morning. But when I did set it up, I looked at the clock. I had a stop clock, forty five seconds. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that's the setup time, and that uh, that that's makes fast. it uh, for me also as a as a really good filler game. Uh, yeah. it's a little bit large with the board, uh, so it's mm. not not travel sized. But if you have people coming over, you can super quickly. Uh, pull through a couple of rounds, especially if you, everybody already knows the rules. But even then, you can just say, hey, you just place your cubes. If you're right, seven points. If you're next to the correct one, it's three points. And if not, you're done. And then explain the rest on the way, um, Yeah, which works uh, pretty well. Yeah. I wonder, um, there is another game, uh, the fauna thing, that is only animals um, and uh, plants and such, I'm, right? Yeah, I, I forgot if it's fauna or flora. The one with the F. Could be, yeah, the one probably freedom and freeze. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if, um, which one would you actually feel more confident knowing things is it terra or is it more are you more knowledgeable in I plants think, and animals i i think i like this better because this is not only a, a geography but also um, history uh yeah history and or specific uh things like uh, yeah. ufo sightings uh, which is yeah or architecture and yeah. stuff they were there were some yeah also, building things also asked. as a as a kid i like these because you actually get to no to i don't but i have um, to play with my wife yes oh poor boy. no I, I do in i do enjoy those and i i'd rather play a, a game like this uh over something like let's say scrabble where you also have to know things <laughs> um but you're inherently limited by your own lo knowledge here you, yes you are <laughs> you're pulled back by your own knowledge but you I still have the chance to learn something that's not only dependent of what uh, great words other people may be able to form. And that is a terrible comparison because those are very different games. Yeah, uh, but it, it's 
they all are in the category of what do you know? How good are you at yeah. presenting your knowledge? It being with word numbers or whatever. It's all the same category there. It's all like, oh, I was really good student in school. Yeah, yeah. kind of thing. So. Uh, also, also, what uh, uh, what uh, works is if you are really confidently place the cube at the wrong position, maybe you get people to follow you and uh, <laughs> screw them over. Which also never happened. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't fall for it because they they knew that uh, the the elephants, the, the really large elephants, are in, live in Africa and not in India. <laughs> But I tried. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in the next category, shall we? Uh, rate or do you have yes. any other no, wise we... words you want to share with the folks? No. One, two, three. Yeah. This, this, this gets a very solid thumbs up. Uh, it is uh, light and quick when it comes to the, the things that are usually heavy, like rules and, and uh, getting into the flow of the game. It is fun, It's uh, at, at least if you like learning stuff or uh, like knowing stuff. Um, you could be the Wikipedia person of yes. your game group. the the thing the thing that will um maybe uh, be a detriment and that's always the the uh, that always counts for uh, quiz games of any uh, kind is that the answers will be outdated at some point and obviously not for everything that's in there but that you will come across maybe things that probably aren't correct anymore and you have to always keep that in mind from when the game came out although but that's kind of fun too yeah when you say okay it was published in that in that year so that's what we also did with the true pursuit by the way so uh it's just be aware this was published then go with it try to remember how did you were you alive that year already were you kind of um kind of knowledgeable and your own person yet and go back mentally to that to that year and try to remember then yeah. how things were now let's try to remember some funny stories and experiences so um we <laughs> we played this game with two and three people and The two of us, well, <clears throat> this sounds so arrogant, and I don't mean that, but usually I win at those games. Daniel is, this is one of the games, if I really want to have a win, I'm asking for a Scrabble or um, Terra or whatever kind of a game, because I'm actually really good at them. It's really good. In comparison to all the other board it games. It is really refreshing, let me tell you, to be married to such a modest wife. No. Humble but... and uh, knowing how to uplift everybody else in the room with the, I'm the best at this game, you all suck. No. I know more than you. No. But I have a sponge brain, <laughs> meaning I remember the weirdest things. A lot of holes things. in there, or <laughs> yeah, no, I, I soak know. up everything. Oh. I, I'm people tell me so often. Why do you remember that? What you remember that? Are you keep a list or something? No, I just remember. I listen. Sorry, folks. So and I listen to the weirdest things. It's not that I'm that I want to be uh, the person who can spout out every fact uh, on for things on this earth, but it it just gets stuck in here. So if I want to play a competitive game with Daniel. And I really want to make sure that I have a good chance at winning because he won all the date nights before, maybe, at all the other board games. I asked to play a game like this. Now, we played this uh, best out of three. This is something that we uh, like to do because, well, it's, it plays really fast with just the two of us. We don't dilly-dally with our answers. And the first game, of course, yeah, I won. Kind of expected there. Second ga game, he he buried me, and he had a score that was unheard of. He almost went all the way around the board. So someone, it's like someone had to teach uh, a modest, a humble person a lesson. It seems. I counteracted that with another win, of course. <laughs> But it was like. 
You what the heck are you taking away my game category from me? You don't dare, honey. This is my category. You can have all the others and that's fine. We can also both win at the co-op games. Very good. But you are not taking away this quiz category from me. And you were a good man. And you said, yes, honey, this one belongs to you. I'm going to give you another win. A legitimate win. That, that being said, <laughs> um, uh, I didn't mention that before, but uh, there's actually another pack of cards in here uh, with red borders or there are a couple of cards with red borders and we haven't even played uh, no we just we had those. one or two there, red cards there's some, in here some, some in here that uh, there was one yeah so there's um some with a with a red border that are considered to be a little bit more difficult and that were not mostly the ones we had i no. actually don't i didn't check into the we actually didn't open the other pack yet because uh because we have to go through one thing first and yes. then we can Every, play with the everything has to be answered thoroughly before exactly exactly also, if i, if also I they, wake you up at night and ask you those questions you have to be able to answer first <laughs> anyway the second, uh, the other game that we had um, was actually last night, and we played with my mom. So my mom's also a very well uh, loving person of these kinds of quiz games, and uh, she this was right down her alley, up her alley, up, up her alley. alley. Also, uh, so, so surprisingly, uh, this is a quiz game where it actually doesn't matter that much um, uh, what kind of language what language it is yeah. in because uh, our, well, her her mom is not that great with English, and usually, if you would play something like Trivial Pursuit, I would assume it's really difficult. It hinders but, you if you. But here, you, yeah. you first of all, everybody uh, has to answer the same thing, so you can explain very quickly and tell in, what is yeah. meant. Uh, second of all, uh, it is uh, usually either nobody knows what it is, uh, like uh, Svalbard, or uh, uh, everybody knows what it is and it's very obvious or the picture is already obvious. And since you are only placing things on a map or down here on yeah. numbers, that's a uh, very, uh, let's say, language agnostic. Yeah, yeah, oh, wonderfully said. So uh, she was sitting there yesterday with us. Again, we played best out of three. And uh, I won the first game, Daniel won the second game, my mom won the third game. So we we all had a win down there. And we were sitting there sometimes like, oh. I, uh, her and I, we also kind of read um, the same book. So we like a certain genre, the both of us. And we have read the same books. Um, and... Uh, one of the questions was uh, said in those books. There, there was a question: um, uh, What was the longest channel without locks? And uh, when was it opened? And how long is it? And we both know it was the Suez Channel, but it, with the the year. And we we read it in a book, and we could say the book and the scene that it was in. It was like, do you remember? Do you remember? And he was sitting there like. And I thought one person like that was bad. No, I've got two person entertainment. But, <laughs> but we as, all didn't as, get the year right. As endearing as that sounds, it's guess, not. <laughs> guess who placed the cube correctly on the the yeah, space? Yeah, you did because you started. It was you were the first player. Of and course guess you. guess who had not read any books or any idea where that longest channel was? This guy. So. <laughs> No, it was, we were we were wrecking our brain on when it was uh, opened. That yeah. was the thing that was in the book for, that we both read. It was like, oh, why don't we remember? For this, you get a metric. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I love you too. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then, of course, the misdirection thing happened with the elephant. Um, where... Um, stick. No, we... But it, it did work with the desert... Which is the largest desert? How much the, the largest, largest arid, sand arid desert? Arid yeah. desert, yeah. And my mom went for desert Gobi, and we were both tied on the Sahara, and we kind of, kind of on the Sahara, yeah, Sahara, Sahara, Sahara. 
If you think that I'm a raided, empty person, I'm going to show you I'm not. I'm going to maybe a little bit of er erosion going on with your sponge. No, no, that's that's wrinkles. On it. <laughs> that's not. I have to have some restoration work done hmm. later. It's fine. I'm going to make myself human before we go out tonight. That's I, too. I, I see. I see. That's going to happen too. But yeah, it was a lot of fun yesterday. My mom enjoyed this game so much. She played it for the first time, and uh, that uh, yeah, I, I think we might have a contender for um, New Year's Eve gaming mm -hmm. with this one. So we'll see. Yeah, we have uh, a lot of smart asses in in our yeah. uh, group of friends. Uh, so games and like these are too. perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, speci obviously, you have to ban them from using phones. And yeah, no Wikipedia in, there. In, in, no. In Wikipedia. Yeah. Although we had to, this is kind of kind of uh, well embarrassing almost, but we had to Wikipedia yesterday because uh, it said uh, what is the largest island on the planet and well i went for australia but then it was a continent so we had to wikipedia what exactly is the definition of an island in why is australia not an island and we learned well someone said i don't think that continents are islands yeah i think my mom said that no <laughs> I, I don't as i to as her. i just said lots of smart asses in this family yeah um yeah but uh it's it's a really nice game. So if you if you need uh, some uh, a good game that also works, I think pretty terrific as a present, even for someone who's not playing a lot of board games, this is probably something. Unless um, you have someone who really hates with a passion any kinds of games where knowledge is required, uh, which um, I can also totally understand that uh, then that will probably not win you over. But it's doing a very good job in the right direction that uh, even if someone, I think, hates games like Trivial Pursuit, they will find this at least tolerable, yeah. which uh, is probably not a good quote for the back of the box. But uh, Yeah, if you can get a person who absolutely despises these kinds of games, get them to at least tolerate this game and play with you that's a, actually it's quite a compliment yeah, yeah. to the game you know i think i don't have anything to guess uh for the next draw for initiative no i just i said it at the beginning of the video you are not listening oh. you were making jokes i think uh, i don't have to guess anything for draw for initiative this time I already if have only, a migraine. You don't have to work on giving me one. If only it would, someone would have mentioned something at some point. Oh, well. Uh, in my head, there is all the torture <laughs> instruments. <laughs> like in a shopping mall. <laughs> Which one am I going to take? <laughs> well, <laughs> you may see Sarah next week again when we're back. Maybe me. We'll see. Of course. I will see you. I just have that as a comic strip in my head. I'm not gonna act on that. Why would I? I will maybe pull your Vimma, ha, which is <laughs> your German lesson of the day. It's uh, those hairs at the arm. We call them Vimma, ha, because he's kind of whiny when I'm pulling them. See? <laughs> And Wimmern is a... <laughs> so. well, there is a German word called Flimmerha, but I, mm -hmm. I never really corrected Sarah on the term, so she keeps on calling them Wimmerha, which is <laughs> like, yeah, whining. When you pull at them, which you're is, whining. <laughs> which is, well... Everybody has a little bit of brain damage to live with, so I'm sorry. That's Why? <laughs> it just makes the world more interesting and kind of fun, at least for me. Uh, Ooh, okay, it's time to go get the next uh, dose of um, painkillers <laughs> into, <my, laughs> into my throat and enjoy the rest of we'll, the weekend. We'll be happy to see you here next week uh, when we return and talk about a different game. Um, if you want to be reminded of that, there's an inherent feature to YouTube called subscribing, <laughs> uh, which you may do now. Uh, if you had a laugh, you can thumb this up. If not, you can thumb this up. <laughs> um, this is a strong reminder of how desperate people in Europe are. Um, 
You can also thumb this up. Um, we also have a geek list on uh, Board Game Geek that lists all of our adventures in board games. Um, and um, actually, uh, Sarah and her friend Tina have another uh, geek list which uh, where they in where they talk about how they painted pictures like with colors, like real painting stuff, and talking about them, how they did things, and then criticizing each other's... You have never watched our show, obviously. <laughs> we do paint pictures with colors and everything, but it is experiences that we have from board games, and we kind of have a th therapy session there, reminding ourselves that uh, we are still good people, though we lost to Daniel. I was about to say, somehow I always get some negative vibes from uh, no, some, some of the no, things that we are actually, depicted there. No, there's a few where uh, we pretty much praise you and put you on a pedestal. So, so I need to watch a couple of them to mm -hmm. find those. Mm -hmm. I see. Look at the pictures where you are depicted. You can you can try and find those uh, and uh, find the pictures. It's where in the, I'm, on the playlist I'm on this depicted. channel. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And then write us in the comment section below what you think the ones are. They are so obvious, folks. I have to tell you. So it's, yeah. Anyway, where are you going to go now? We're going to see you next week. Have a wonderful one. Take good care. Do some cool stuff. Maybe play a board game. And uh, see you then. Goodbye. Bye. I have to call. Hence, we have to open the Lego.